All right, what's doing, everybody? Today is Thursday, September 5th. We are officially two months away from Election Day. I've got a big program for you guys. I've got Cash Patel, Roger Stone, and Royce White joining me on the podcast. And Tim Waltz, he's got a bunch of family members who have come out in support of President Donald Trump. I'm Alec Lace. This is The Alec Lace Show. The American family is under attack. Parents are the underdog of this nation. Your children are being indoctrinated. That's right. Your children. They do not belong to the state. They do not belong to the school system. They belong to you, the parents, as a blessing from God our Father. So let's preserve, protect, and fight for the American family together. You're listening to The Alec Lay Show. The future is family. All right, here we go. Welcome everybody to the Alec Lay Show. I'm happy and honored as always to be here with you guys. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching the broadcast as it streams live on Rumble, please get down there, hit the follow button, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, get involved in the live chat, and don't forget to share the broadcast with everybody in your network or in your neighborhood. Uh, And if you're listening anywhere else, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. We are officially two months away from Election Day. It's hard to believe we are 61 days away uh, from the biggest day, which could be, uh, you know, I mean, many people are calling it this, uh, the biggest election in our history. I know it seems like we say that every time we have a presidential election, but man, uh, the future of this country is going to be decided on November 5th. Are we going to be uh, with Trump or are we going to be a, become a communist country? And that is what is on the table here. We are going to either be Christian or communist. We are either going to be a uh, freedom or communist. I mean, that, that's really what is on the ballot here in uh, November, just two months away. Also, we are only five days away from the presidential debate between President Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Uh, we should have had a debate last night. Uh, between the two of them on Fox, but unfortunately, uh, Kamala Harris uh, backed out of that one. She can't go uh, where she is in the uncomfortable zone. She has to stay in her comfort zone and go with somebody that's in the, the mainstream media, the ABC, NBC. These are There's only certain places she will ever go. She will never go to a hostile interviewer. Uh, she will never take unscripted uh, questions or interviews like we saw she did her first sit-down interview with CNN. Everything was all coddled. Uh, she looked really ridiculous sitting in that little miniature chair, but but everything was protected for her. She had her, her her service animal, Tim Waltz, that was right there with her. And it was a 41-minute interview cut down into 18 minutes. So everything The media has done everything possible to protect this woman, uh, to try to propel her into office. And again, we are just two months away from Election Day, five days away from the debate and the showdown between Trump and Kamala. And we are only 13 days away from Trump's sentencing date. So what is going to happen with that? And I've got a great panel of guests joining me on the podcast today. Uh, I promised you on Tuesday I would have Roger Stone here. It didn't work out. He had some last-minute issues come up. Uh, So I told you I'd reschedule. I got him for you this morning. Roger Stone is going to be first up here with me, and there is so much to talk about. So we're going to get into all those things I just mentioned uh, and so much more. Also joining me is going to be Royce White, who really shocked a lot of people when he won his primary uh, in Minnesota for his Senate, for the Senate seat, challenging Amy uh, Klobuchar. And we are going to close it out with my man Cash Patel. Uh, He is one of the best, and he is going to have a big part in this Trump administration, provided we get him back into the White House. So great, great panel on deck for you guys. One thing I wanted to share before we get into the interviews here is this picture that went viral yesterday of Tim Walz's own family uh, in Nebraska, all wearing uh, Waltz for Trump shirts, and they have a Trump banner, a Trump flag uh, right behind them there. And we know that uh, Trump even acknowledged uh, Tim Waltz's brother, Jeff Waltz, as being a Trump supporter. The family, with this guy's family is saying, you cannot have this guy be anywhere near the White House. Uh, they are trying to warn the American people. And again, it's so crazy how the left, when RFK Jr.'s family came out against him, they made it seem like this was such a big deal. Now you've got you know, a whole bunch of Tim Walz family members coming out against him and saying openly that they're voting for Trump and the media is ignoring it. Because they are doing everything they can to help Kamala Harris and her campaign, her established campaign, this system that she's in. They're trying to help put her into the office. That's all it's about. 
There is no such thing as, oh, ABC is giving you the real legitimate dope on what's going on on the election. No, they are not doing that. ABC is giving you only one version of the story. NBC is only giving you one side, and that is anti-Trump. It is anti-Republican. It is anti-free speech. It's anti-family. That is what they are giving you on these outlets. And if you're watching them, you're a sucker. I mean, that's the truth. Uh, so, and you had Trump, he sat down with, uh, Sean Hannity. I'll play some clips of that at the end of today's broadcast, maybe just to give you some of the highlights, but I want to get into these interviews here. Again, I promised you that I would have Roger Stone on the podcast here, uh, Tuesday. Got him here coming up now. I got him in the zoom room. So let's bring him on. Now, again, I want to hit him with, we are only two months away from the election day. We've got five days from the debate. I'm curious to get his take on the debate. Roger Stone is somebody who's able to, you know, look into that crystal ball and, uh, give you some predictions and man, he is on the money a lot. He is a legendary political strategist. He's been doing this for decades. I mean, he goes way back. Uh, so he's the guy that knows uh, almost more than anybody uh, what's going on with these campaigns, how to predict the way that these things are going. Uh, so we're going to get his take on that. Uh, and I want to ask him about the October surprise. In my opinion, they're going to pull uh, Biden out, put Kamala in, make a big, you guys have heard me talk about this on the podcast. So I'm going to get his take on that. Um, the Trump sentencing coming up and so much more. So let's get into this right now. With my friend, Roger Stone. Let's bring him on. You're listening to The Alec Lee Show. The future is family. All right. Uh, joining me now, uh, Roger Stone. Welcome back to The Alec Lee Show. Alex, great to be with you. I really appreciate you taking the time. You know, every time I reach out to you, you're always so gracious with your time, whether it's a Zoom like this or in person, like in Detroit. Uh, you've always been very gracious with your time, and it really means a lot to me. So I just want to say thanks so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here today. Well, Alec, your your show is really good. I enjoy being on with you, and we reach a lot of patriots, so let's do it. And it's important. And, and you know, you're, you're the first person that I heard. Uh, say that Joe Biden would not be the nominee for the Democrat Party. You're the first person I remember saying that. And so now let's see if you can put your crystal ball back on, uh, look into that crystal ball again here. M m in my opinion, uh, it seems like there's going to be a, a, an October surprise coming from the Democrats. I think maybe it could be that they're going to push Joe Biden out and make Kamala Harris become the first woman president in history. This way she rides that momentum right into the election. What's your take on that? Are they going to pull that? Are they going to make her the president before the election? Uh, I think you have hit it right on the head. If you go back to last June at the Turning Point USA event in Palm Beach, uh, I said three things. I said Joe would not be the candidate for re-election, so I'm good for one. I said Kamala Harris would briefly become president. I stand by that. Uh, I said that uh, that Kamala, uh, pardon me, that Michelle Obama would ultimately be the nominee. Now I think I'm going to turn out to be wrong about that, but not but not for lack of trying. See that that delay between the time that Joe was bludgeoned out of the race, forced out of the race, uh, and Obama's endorsement of Kamala Harris, there was an interregnum there which I believe he was making a last-ditch effort to convince a much stronger candidate, Michelle Obama, to run. Unfortunately, she wants to lecture all of us about not wanting to be wealthy, about why it's it's bad to aspire to success when she has a $100 million house uh, in uh, Martha's Vineyard. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the effort to diminish Joe Biden continues. Did you see him then put him on at the kitty desk yesterday? Uh, this is embarrassing, but they, they seek to embarrass him. First of all, in their convention, as you know, they pushed him out of primetime. He spoke after midnight to make sure that the minimum number of Americans saw him. They would like to forget him and everything about him, particularly his record which unfortunately she's going to have to run on. Now, she seems to think that she's the change. The real question I would have asked her, and I, if I were Dana Bash on CNN, thank God I'm not, uh, was, uh, uh, Madam Vice President, could you tell us precisely what you would do different than Joe Biden is doing right now? Uh, and I don't think she can answer that question because the answer is more of the same or worse. They've already raised taxes. They want to raise them more. Uh, they they want to completely rework the entire tax scheme so that if you owned a home uh, and your home appreciated, but you didn't sell your home, you'd still have to pay the federal government 
uh, the uh, a tax on the amount of the appreciation which you haven't even gotten or put in your pocket. This is a prescription for disaster. This is a prescription for depression. Uh, so her, her agenda uh, is either the same as his or it's more radical than his. Yeah, she don't even have any kind of policies, even on her website. The Donald Trump is actually doing a, a policy tour. That the Donald Trump policy tour. She's doing like a, a joy tour. Uh, it makes no sense. But uh, I, I do think that they wouldn't miss up this golden opportunity to make her the president. And, and, and just they would make it such a like a glamorous Hollywood style production of her inauguration. And it would go on for weeks. It would be like George Floyd getting 10 funerals. It'd be the same thing. She'd be inaugurated time and time again. But the next thing I want to ask you about here, Roger, which is very important coming up uh, after the debate, which I'll get to in a minute is the sentencing on September 18th. Uh, how do you see this? They have their golden opportunity to put Trump in prison. They've been dangling that carrot in front of the Democrats for a few years. Uh, what do you see happening on sentencing day? Well, I guess I'm a pessimist. You know, I'm not an attorney. So the lawyers who have been consistently wrong through Trump's entire case say, well, it's a, it's not a criminal offense. It's not a violent offense. Uh, uh, he has no prior criminal record. Surely, the judge is going to give him a, a sentence of incarceration, but then stay the sentence a pending appeal. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think Judge Juan Merchan is both uh, uh, extraordinarily corrupt. I also think that he's on an ego trip. Here's his chance to be a liberal icon, the guy who put Donald Trump in jail. Uh, and also, of course, they would love to hamper the last you know 60 plus days of our campaign by taking our candidate uh, off the stump. Now, if that happens, I expect that Robert F. Kennedy, Tulsi Gabbard, of course, uh, J.D. Vance, and others will fill the void. So, A, yes, I do think they're going to incarcerate him. B, hopefully it will be brief, uh, although the New York system is so broken, who knows? And thirdly, it will be the single greatest act of political overreach in American history. It could actually propel him uh, to victory in what I think is going to be an extraordinarily close race. Well, I, I, I agree with you. And I just I can't imagine that they would get to this far. They would arrest him, book him, give him the mugshot, uh, convict him and get right to this point where they know they may never get here ever again. And I don't think they would pass up that opportunity to put him in jail. I mean, it just seems like uh, it, it, it's very possible. And, and getting to this uh, debate, it just seems like these two styles. The last time that Donald Trump was in a presidential debate, the other guy forfeited his campaign. The last time Kamala Harris was in a presidential debate, she forfeited her campaign and dropped out of the race. So uh, it this seems like it's a very unbalanced match. She wants to be able to sit down, have no cards, have an unmuted mic so she can get her I'm um, speaking moment. Uh, I think this plays out terribly for her. But how do you break down? What are we what should we expect to see on September 10th next week on Tuesday? But this is going to be uh, obviously extraordinarily interesting. I mean, she, she has no game at all. She can't speak. That's clear. That CNN embarrass, uh, in interview, if that's what it was, that was embarrassing. First of all, why did why was her seat, you know, a foot and a half lower than everybody else's? That was the idea to make her look like a midget. Maybe she's going to take Robert Reich as her running mate. I don't know. It'd be an all midget ticket. Uh, I, I, look, I, I don't really think uh, that that this is. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. It's all a question of Trump and his discipline. He showed amazing discipline in the debate with Biden. He didn't take the bait when he, Biden tried to call him names. Uh, again, the key question for Trump to pose to her is, you're going to make everything great all of a sudden. How would your policies be any different than Joe Biden's? Where are they different? She's The, the most interesting and compelling things about her candidacy uh, she's ripped off from Donald Trump, whether it is the the tax uh, on tips or sealing the border. Sorry, babe, you are in charge of the border. I know your friends at NBC and ABC are trying to cover for you and pretend that never happened, but it did happen. You were put in charge of the border and you're a disaster. So I think Trump uh, will, I think you're going to see a, a repeat of his CNN debate performance. I think he will be cool. Uh, I think he will be funny. I think he will be uh, uh, disciplined, but I think he'll keep coming back to the key issues when it comes to inflation, uh, when it comes when it comes to the cost of living, 
uh, when it comes to the cost of gasoline or it comes to the possibility of nuclear war, she doesn't have much to run on, does she? No, and, and those are the three things, Roger. Let's face it. Obviously, the border, and we're seeing it with Venezuelan gangs all over the place. Uh, we're seeing more and more. A 14-year-old girl stabbed the other day in Indiana by an illegal immigrant. So we're seeing the, the border catastrophe is number one in everybody's mind right there with the inflation because middle-class guys like me have been getting buried for the last four years. We all see that. And then, of course, we see the wars that have broken out all over the country. Uh, the foreign relations have sucked. So in the top three categories, I think he just buries her all the way. But she's not doing these sit-down interviews. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, 36 interviews to one uh, th that she's done and, and sat down and given. And it was a pre-scripted interview recorded. They did a 41 minute interview and cut it down to 18 minutes. So they're do the media is doing their part here, Roger. Once again, like they did with Biden, to coddle the candidate, protect the candidate and shield them from any real questions being asked. I mean, that seems to be what's going on. Uh, I think that's that is exactly true. And of course, we have to have a legitimate concern about ABC. I mean, they are completely and totally hostile. Final point here, though, and I think it's a key one. The endorsement of Robert F. Kennedy uh, and the endorsement of Tulsi Gabbard give us the opportunity to forge a new American majority. The old Democrat Party, the party of John Kennedy, the party of Harry Truman, the party that was anti-communist, the party that was pro-capitalism, the party that believed in a strong national defense, the party that was patriotic, that party no longer exists. That's now a Marxist party. They should formally change their name. But I think the Communist Party of the USA name may be taken. I'm not sure. Uh, that party is done. Uh, and we have an opportunity to build a new majority uh, based uh, on uh, on common sense, based on the, the interests of the middle class, of the working people of this country. This is this is the opportunity for a major, major political realignment. Uh, I, I think it is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We saw it in 1932 under Franklin Roosevelt. We saw it in 1968 uh, under Richard Nixon that that new majority ultimately manifests itself in the election of Ronald Reagan. By the way, if you haven't seen the new Reagan movie, absolutely must. It's unbelievable. It's really great. Uh, so uh, if they decide to throw Donald Trump in jail, he's got a number of representatives out there who I think will stump the country uh, and move victory uh, into the Trump column. And there, there was nothing like that energy when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. took the stage there. I mean, that, that was quite a moment. What, what, and his political his speech was right on target. So I think that that momentum, I think you're right. I mean, I think it does open up the the uh, the party to a lot more, you know, people that were on the fence, especially the old school Democrats that believed in that philosophy of ask not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. The old school Democrats that have that feeling are still uh, are still around. And I, I think they'll be definitely going for Trump. But I think one thing that he said the other day, Roger, was very key. And I would love to see a reporter asked Camilla for her stance on it. He said on this Lex Friedman podcast that he would uh, uh, release the Epstein client list, which is another thing that's on top of everybody's mind, because while everyone else is getting persecuted for this and for that, not one person has paid a price for being for, for uh, you know, taking these kids and doing things to them on this Ellis, uh, uh, Epstein Island. Uh, so if someone should ask, hey, Camilla, will you release the Epstein client list and hold her feet to the fire? Uh, I think that could be an important part of this whole equation. I, I really like to see that for two reasons. One, if you're on social media, there has been a concerted and completely phony effort to claim that a tranche of documents that were legally released uh, about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, further implicated Donald Trump uh, with Epstein. It's a lie. OK, it's just a lie. Uh, Donald Trump was on Epstein's plane twice with his wife uh, and his daughter. They flew from Palm Beach to New York and from New York back to Palm Beach uh, uh, on a weekend. That's it. Sorry, folks, there is no more. And then secondarily, anybody out there who wants to say, oh, Roger Stone was on Epstein's island. He was seen wearing a bull mask. Uh, and uh, you could tell because it, of the Nixon tattoo on his back. Please say that on the record. Include your name so I can sue you because it's bullshit. So uh, I would like to see all of these records uh, released. You might know that not know this, Alec, but I'm the first American author in the country to fully expose Epstein. 
way back in 2015, my book, The Clinton's War on Women, the longest chapter in the book is on Jeffrey Epstein and his relationship with the Clintons. It was Epstein who financed the Clinton Foundation the initial, and the Clinton Global Initiative. The Clintons continued to socialize with Epstein, continued to visit his island, continued to visit him in Palm Beach after he had been convicted of sex crimes in the state of Florida. Donald Trump had cut him off years before. So yeah, I'm anxious to see this. Uh, you know, I lost an awful lot in the Mueller investigation, Maybe I can get some of it back by suing the people who keep insisting that I visited Epstein Island. An absurdity. Yeah. And, and Roger, one of the things that makes most sense is that if if there was anything to it, if there was any kind of uh, if that held any water with Donald Trump, the Epstein client list would have been released five years ago. I mean, there's not one person on the planet they wouldn't bury in sink if it meant they could actually get Donald Trump for something like this. So that tells you right away that uh, that he's not there and that there's no nothing to it. Uh, but you say talking about suing, uh, the DNC is suing RFK Jr. to keep his name off the ballot now, where uh, uh, keep his name on the ballot, I should say, where previously they sued to keep his name off the ballot. So when he wanted to run, they didn't want him on there. Now that he doesn't want to run and wants to support Trump, they want his name to stay on the ballot. How do you think this is going to play out? Is he going to be able to get his name off the ballot like he wants? Uh, probably not everywhere, but in the states where I actually think it matters, uh, Nevada, uh, Arizona and Pennsylvania, don't think he will be on the ballot. Michigan is the most epically corrupt uh, state in the country when it comes to counting votes. Their attorney general, their secretary of state, uh, are, they're just criminals. There's no other way to put it. Uh, he probably won't be able to get his name off there. The courts ruled against him yesterday. Uh, look, as long as he's out on the stump in those states saying, folks, don't waste your vote uh, voting for me. I'm not running. Uh, support Donald Trump. I think it will have a minimal impact, frankly. Yeah. All right. Last thing, the um, uh, the Save Act. Uh, Speaker Johnson says he's going to tattoo this thing to the spending bill. Uh, th obviously, this this seems like the only reason why you would want to have nobody have to show proof of ID to be a citizen to vote is so that you could cheat. There seems to be no other explanation for not uh, expecting people to have a voter ID. Do you think Speaker Johnson is the Democrats obviously going to throw this back in his face? Does Speaker Johnson hold up and not forfeit? this save act in order to go forward what do you think happens with this uh, he must absolutely hold the line uh if he has to shut the government down shut the government down uh, and when they start their nonsense you ask one simple question how do you justify people who are not legally eligible to vote in the united states and vote it if you don't like it too bad and while you're at it by the way cut all the funding for the department of justice jeez it's not kind of obvious uh you could start by cutting jack smith's Illegal funding, by the way. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think I think in this case, Johnson has stepped up to do the right thing. He needs to stick to the guns when they go crazy about shutting the government down. Ignore them. Ignore them and ask them to explain why you're in favor of people who are not legally eligible to vote, people who don't live in the country. Uh, why do you want them to be able to vote? To me, that's a non-starter. Nancy Pelosi, after half a quart of vodka, she blurted it out just the other day in an interview. Folks, don't let's not make any uh, bones about this. Their plan is to change the makeup of the American electorate by flooding us with illegals. It is their plan. Uh, a number of states are reporting, mostly through the Departments of Motor Vehicles, record numbers of people who are registering who are not eligible to vote because they're not U.S. citizens. Yeah, it's never been about helping the poor, struggling, illegal immigrant. It's always been about helping the Democrats stay in power. There's no doubt about that. Roger Stone, what do you got coming up on the Stone Zone where people go to catch it? Uh, people can go to stonezone.com. Uh, it's all kind of there. Uh, every day at 8 uh, p.m. Eastern, you can go to rumble.com slash Roger Stone for the Stone Zone show. Uh, follow us there, folks. Uh, Rumble's a great platform. Uh, I, every time I put something on YouTube, it lasts approximately three seconds. Uh, I watched Robert Kennedy's amazing interview with Mike Tyson talking about the murder of his uh, father, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, Senator from New York. Uh, I think it was actually on YouTube for less than 15 minutes before they took it down. So if you want to find out anything about me, go to stonezone.com. It's all there. Got the link down below. Roger Stone, always honored to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for always being so gracious with your time. Thank you, Alec. God bless you. 
All right, you heard him. Uh, honored to have Roger Stone back on the Alec Lay Show. What did you guys think about the interview? Uh, always blessed to have Roger Stone. He does. He, he's one of these guys, just like Cash Patel, uh, who whenever I reach out and say, hey, you got a few minutes to join me on the show, they always say yes. They never give me a runaround. It's, it, it, they respond very quickly. Uh, I'm very blessed. Uh, to have connections like this with Roger Stone. This guy is the legend when it comes to political strategy. And you heard his predictions there. And I, 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 and I really do believe that this is going to be the October surprise that we're going to see. They're going to force out Biden and they're going to put Kamala Harris in to the White House, make her the first, uh, first woman president. Uh, what, what do you think uh, of Roger Stone's predictions there? How do you think the debate is going to play out? Get the chatter going in the live chat. Put a comment down below. And this is it, guys. This is it. it we're freedom or a bust. And uh, that, that's what's coming here. We got two months. So get get involved at any at any particular level you can get involved in your local election for senator, for Congress, uh, whatever it takes. Get involved this year, man. Don't sit on the sidelines. And one of those guys, uh, Royce White, who really, you know, kind of flipped everybody on their head. He won. He was the underdog to win the Senate primary in Minnesota. He crushed it. He gets the primary. Now he's going to try to take down a, someone who's been in there for two decades, about almost two decades. You got Amy Klobuchar. That's the senator in there, a dangerous politician. And he's going head to head with her. And man, this would be huge, a huge win, because not only is it about getting Trump in the White House, it's about gaining seats in the Senate. And Royce White can really, really bring it home. So go to RoyceWhite.us. Get involved in the campaign. Do what you can uh, to either help on election day. Uh, help in any. There's so many different ways you could sign up to help somebody's campaign. And it doesn't really take that much. Uh, so get involved, uh, whether that's being a poll watcher or uh, whether it's, you know, helping somebody like a candidate like Royce White, uh, handing out signs or bumper stickers, whatever it may be. Get involved in the fight because you don't want to have to look back and say, damn, I, I, if I could do it again, I would have gotten involved to try to help my candidate or try to help Trump or try to help the Republican in my neighborhood. I would have done something. Once we go past November 5th and we, if we lose it, we're never going to get a chance to go back. You can't get into the time machine. You can't get into the DeLorean and go back in time and say, now I'm going to get on the ball and help. Right now you're here. Get involved. Royce White is one of these guys. He's running. Uh, he is the first United States Senate nominee to be born in the 1990s. Uh, so young guy trying to make some waves. Uh, he's obviously he's an he played in the NBA. He's a, a former basketball uh, standout. He was a first round pick in the NBA draft back in 2012. Uh, this is the he's he's going against Amy Klobuchar. This is somebody that we want to see succeed. So I'm honored to get him on the podcast today. You can catch him over on. Uh, he's always over on the War Room. Uh, we know obviously what they did to Steve Bannon. They threw him in jail because our justice system is corrupt. But you can watch Royce White over there on the uh, on the War Room again. RoyceWhite.us. Find out about his campaign and let's see what he's got to say about how things are going. Let's bring him on. You're listening to the Alec Lee Show. The future is family. All right, let's do this. Joining me now, Royce White. Welcome to the Alec Lay Show. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm honored to have you here. You know, what's interesting is I was, I was looking at this the other day, and uh, on Wikipedia, the most trusted source I think we have on the internet, uh, the first line that it says for Royce White is, Royce White is an American conspiracy theorist. Before it says anything else about basketball, politics, that anything, first line, Royce White is an American conspiracy theorist. What's your thoughts on that? Well, hey, you got to wear it as a badge of honor these days. I mean, uh, if, there, if there are no conspiracies, uh, then as the great Steve Bannon always says, there are no coincidences. There are no conspiracies, but there are no coincidences. So, you know, I, I continue to speak the truth and let people make of it what they will. You know, for example, I guess probably one of the conspiracy theories is my uh, my, my comments on the 2020 election and at one of the big three games I wrote on the side of my head that Trump won. And I guess, I, you know, you can't question your elections unless you're Amy Klobuchar, my Senate uh, opponent. In 2018, she said that the, the machines weren't secure, weren't secure and were in a significant, were at significant risk of being hacked in the 2020 election. 2020 election that we all question. Funny. So. Yeah, it's funny, too, because the Democrats were able to do that when Donald Trump won it with calling him the illegitimate president and uh, Russia is the one that, that, that won on the election. We went through years of that. But and of course, too, I mean, I've had videos that were taken off of YouTube, TikTok, just for talking about the election. When I had I know Dinesh D'Souza had the 2000 mules. They took every video I posted about that. They took it off. Uh, and obviously everything during the covid, if you came out and said anything during covid, 
uh, that didn't go along with the, the party line, your videos were demonetized at, at, at least and taken off of the channels at best. So uh, we all went through all of this. And it turns out all those conspiracy theories, all of them came out to be true. Yeah, that uh, that that's a great line. I got a screenshot that on Wikipedia and posted up on all my socials. That's uh, that's a that's a real badge of honor from the authoritative sources. <laughs> it is. Well, let's get into it here, Royce, because yeah. uh, obviously we need Donald Trump to win back the White House here. Where it's a desperate time here. It's Trump or communism. Trump or the future of this country is finished. But we also need once Trump gets in there is to win these Senate seats because without having the Senate and without having a bigger majority in the House, or God forbid we lose the majority in the House, uh, Trump is going to be handcuffed the minute that he gets into the White House. So your Senate race is going to be key to this. Uh, how, how do you? I mean, how? How's the race going? How's the campaign going right now? You pulled off the big upset. Uh, you're the man right now in the arena to take her down. Uh, how's the campaign going? Well, the campaign is going great. I feel good about our chances. And look, the whole reason I got into politics is because I was sick of the corruption uh, in our government and with our, our permanent political class here in, in America, but also uh, around the world. They definitely have a, a global reach as well. So uh, my, my thing is to give the people of Minnesota an option uh, and, and at the end of the day, the people get to decide you get the government you deserve. I'm not one of these. Uh, I'm not one of these uh, sporting politicians. I'm not really a politician at all. I'm just a regular guy who who wants to represent the American people and American citizenship. But but I'm definitely not one of these sporting politicians where it's like it's me versus Amy. No, this is all about the people. They know exactly who Amy Klobuchar is. She's been in there 18 years. 24 would be a disgrace to the United States Senate. I think everybody sees more clearly now. Who's who? You know, when you look at Jimmy McCain siding with the communists, I, I think we're getting a clear look at who everybody has been for a long time. Uh, I, I provide a, an alternative and a departure from that status quo, and and we'll let the people decide. Yeah, and, and Jimmy McCain obviously called out uh, Donald Trump for being in the uh, Arlington Cemetery with the Gold Star families, and then little did he know. Uh, there's a, uh, a, a campaign video from John McCain uh, at Arlington Cemetery. So it's like uh, these things, these people. But one of the th key things that you just said there, too, is that you're not a politician. The American people are so hungry uh, for people that want to represent the people themselves and come from us. They represent us and, and they have those same motives inside. Instead of these politicians, somebody like a Klobuchar who comes, tries to play it off like she's some moderate person, that she could play to both sides, when yeah. really, in actuality, her Senate record is the most far liberal that there is since Kamala Harris has left the Senate. So, uh, you know, we're tired of these uh, wolves in sheep's clothing that present themselves as for the people. But they're these politicians that are backed by big money when you get down to the bottom of it. Kamala, Waltz, uh, Amy. I mean, they're all they're all fruit from the same poisonous tree. You know, my, you know, Amy, Amy is actually the most dangerous politician in this country, that she is the prototype for the most dangerous politician in this, in this country because she has this sort of unassuming Midwest Minnesota nice persona going, at least in the public. And uh, she gets on Twitter and she talks about all the bills she was a part of, all of the bipartisan work that she's done with the Uniparty. And you can't even say Uniparty or else you're an American conspiracy theorist. <laughs> uh, but 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 Amy is is uh, one of the one of the best at uh, appearing to be moderate, moderate, and and really, let's just say say it for what it is, the American Uniparty is the best at seeming moderate, and they've been the best at propagandizing this this sort of sentiment that that the center is is where all of the the rationale is, the center is where where the logic and the sanity is. No, the center is where the corruption is. There's nothing more dangerous in this country than a centrist. We've just conceded that centrism is the most optimal form of government. Well, when all of the corruption is concentrated at the center, like with Amy and McConnell and all the others there in the Senate, uh, you know, you, you get the a status quo of corruption. And that's what we see. Anybody who denies now that there's a status quo of corruption in D.C., they're cowardly, right? They, they don't want to accept the fact that the people who govern over them are actually corrupt or they're actually in on it. <laughs> which is which is even worse, especially if you're an average American working class citizen. I mean, to be in on a corruption that doesn't benefit you, that's what makes you a cuck. And then they tell me, well, you can't say the word cuck and expect to get elected. No, the, the, the literal definition of being a cuck is you simping for an American corruption in the center and and fanboying for it when it doesn't benefit you whatsoever. 
Yeah, and the people are tired of seeing this. I mean, we've all watched it go on, especially, too, with the amount of uh, just again during COVID. We've seen yeah. the amount of effect that Big Pharma had. Amy uh, Klobuchar, she's one of these people that's backed by Big Pharma, BlackRock, all these type yes, of things are, are, are backing these people. And I think more people have woken up to this just because of the fact that we now can research this stuff on Twitter. We can hear things on Rumble. We have a chance to actually look for it other than this uh, media that's every commercial. Every, everything is sponsored by Pfizer, sponsored by Pfizer. Oh, but let's give you a non buy his take on what's going on with the pandemic. It's impossible to do that right. when you're getting money from the same people that are benefiting from the thing you're trying to discuss. So people have seen this and are tired of it. Well, and you know, and when you say, well, the people are tired of it, of course, the people have had a belly full of it. There's a lot of people who don't really know any different. And, and we're working in this kind of uh, event horizon where you got people who have have come come from a background where they've always been somewhat disaffected to how government has run this country because they've been running into the ground for a long time. And then you got other people who have, you know, who have, uh, let's say, feelings about uh, about the establishment or the system that they they're now starting to voice, but they may have misplaced or misidentified who those actual levers of power are, and they find themselves co opted into this leftist, I don't know, a pipe dream that they're somehow anti-establishment, all the corporate money, all of the, the big packs and donors and special interests and lobbyists are huddled over there on the left trying to throw their, their bids behind Kamala. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I just don't even see how they believe themselves to be anti-establishment on that side. But the real the real problem is, and, and I give you an example, you know, some people are ready for change. But even in our movement, even on our side of the aisle, some people are still bought into the scheme, the scam. And we have to sort that out. We have about 60 days to have a, 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 a let's say, a, 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 a sort of evolutionary turn of, of the average American mind to save this country. It really has come down to that, in my opinion. For example, you know, you talk about the money in D.C. Look at what Matt Gates did. Matt Gates went after Kevin McCarthy. He had every right and legitimacy to do so. Kevin McCarthy is as entrenched in, in special interests and lobby money and a part of that corrupt status quo in D.C. as anybody. And Matt Gates, as the new young blood there in D.C., you know, trying to make his way, had every right to stand up and say what he said uh, in the well of the Congress. And then you had people like Mark Levin, you know, jump online and say that Matt Gates is just seeking attention, that he has no plan. Or These are people who say that they're on our side. Yeah. You're on our side, but but you you have a problem with Matt Gates speaking about the special interests and lobby money there in the in the well of the Congress. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's not just Mark Levin. I just point him out as a great example. But but I thought what Matt Gates did was was uh, was legendary, was heroic. And we we get so much news now. We forget those type of uh, heroic moments because everything's you know, then a president gets shot and he stands up and says, fight, fight, fight. And it's like, damn, doesn't get any bigger than that. But we've had a bunch of heroes step up. The question is, you know, who? Who's with us and who isn't? Yeah, and just to your, to your point there, too, Trump getting shot in the head, it's, it's almost as if that didn't happen now. The media has yes. just snores about this. We don't hear anything about this. One of the most historical moments of our lifetime that we're living through here, and you don't hear anything about it anymore. It's almost non-existent. Uh, but, yeah, but well, to but that's because it was a miracle. Yeah, the reason exactly. the reason that the reason they don't talk about the Donald Trump thing is because it's 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 uh the best proof that we've had in a long time. It's it really is a. Uh, uh, a, a modern day example of a miracle. I mean, you can't you can't explain it any other way. Three bullets, two of them centimeters away from his, you know, from his brain. It's an absolute miracle. And and every time that they, you know, to talk about it is to acknowledge the the existence of God. So yeah, well said. And and there, there would be like a if we were living in an honest world, there would have been like a major feature about this, like a Dateline or a 2020 yes. or like some major major things would have been already done about it, but nothing. And and we know why. Yeah. Uh, but now, uh, Tim Walls, obviously from uh, Minnesota, this is a guy that now, I mean, he's even getting hit now for a COVID-19 fraud scam that he was involved in. Uh, it, there's something new that was coming out. I don't know if it's uh, uh, you know verified yet, but that was what was up today. But we know about him lying about his service to the country. Uh, yeah. The guy just seems like a walking liar. His family came out in support of Donald Trump. His brother came out in support of Donald Trump. Is, is Tim Walls, is this the guy that really represents Minnesota values? Is, is that what Minnesota is all about? Well, well, here, here's the issue with Minnesota. Minnesota is almost in a dead, uh, even heap uh, when it comes to being Republican or Democrat. If you look at at, at Walter's uh, gubernatorial race back in 2022, uh, fraud and and cheating and and ballot harvesting and and uh, you know COVID restrictions in the senior living homes where they ended up voting Democrat, I think like 96 percent or something like that in the senior living homes in Minnesota. Um, that 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 election was a about a 200,000 person 
spread. I mean, that is a lot when it comes to an election uh, is about six to seven points. But when you think about the actual population size, it's really not. I mean, 1.4 million people voted Republican, 1.6 million, I think, voted Democrat. And you had your independents and the marijuana party took some votes and and the libertarian. You know, there's all these other small parties that take a couple thousand votes here and there. So Minnesota is is kind of split down the middle uh, and has been a genuine purple state for a long time. Uh, Tim Waltz, you know, he's done. An, he's another one. I mean, he's another one of those dangerous politicians that's going to done a good job of smiling and waving, give you that Midwest Minnesota nice persona. But at heart, he's a communist. And and one of the greatest examples is we had an $18 billion surplus here in Minnesota and not a single penny of it went back to the, the Minnesota working class. I mean, that's that. And not only that, but I mean, we have the eighth highest tax rate in the entire union and we have the, the 20th largest GDP and the 21st largest population. So we're being overtaxed by definition, which is another hallmark of communism. Yeah, and, and you said the, the middle class there, uh, Royce. The, the middle class is getting buried, uh, and it has been for the last four years. I, I'm, a, I'm a railroad mechanic. That's what I do. I've been doing that 24 years, and not, nothing has uh, been worse than the way it is. And it's just those two things of grocery and gas. Uh, we just they, Those are the two major things that have crippled the middle class, and we all see it. We can feel it, and it's had a snowball effect through everything else, not, not even getting into the wars that have started all over the place because of these maniacs. Uh, but we, you know, just a, across the country, country i think you're going to have so many people that are saying we can't go four more years of doing this no one's been able to take vacations everyone's working extra shifts overtime for the same things that they had four years ago so whether you like donald trump or you have a problem with trump derangement syndrome or whatever the issues are you have to look at the bottom line of your bills as a family and say we can't do this for another four years it's time for a change but camilla says she's going to give you the change despite this fact that she's been in there for four years and she's made it all worse well, well, let, let, yes, I 1000 percent agree with you. Look, I was the guy after George Floyd died who led a peaceful protest to the Federal Reserve. I think I might be one of the only politician, living politicians in this country that's that's led thousands of people to the front door of the Federal Reserve for a reason, because I think the economy and, and the, the monetary policy should be one of the one of, if not the central focus of, of how people vote, uh, because it not just because of how it affects them, but because it is the the. Uh, you know, the beating heart of what runs this country. It's the beating heart of what runs our entire civilizations, how the money used to say, follow the money. And everybody accepted that that was legitimate. Now, I guess it's become somewhat less uh, significant, but yeah, I mean, the, the scary part is when you really get down to it, uh, I think a lot of people are so financially illiterate uh, in this country that they don't understand monetary policy and the way the country works. And thus, the, the, the mainstream media is able to tell them that that uh, that, you know, we shouldn't believe our, our lying eyes that that when Donald Trump left office, the inflation rate was one point eight percent. And Biden and Harris brought it up to nine percent. I mean, the election should be over right there. Yeah, that yeah. should be it. We shouldn't need any more. But but a lot of people don't even understand inflation. So they let, you know, Joy Ann Reed, for example, was I remember back in uh, 2022, Joy Ann Reed was saying that Republicans taught black men uh, the word inflation before Republicans started saying it, black men didn't know what inflation was. So they they actually, they think you're stupid. The reason they think we're stupid is because partly they know we're stupid because they educated us, right? I mean, they educated the professors in college and then it went down to the, the, the K through 12 public schools. So they have this sort of uh, air of uh, superiority and arrogance and supreme confidence that the American public is stupid because they were in charge of our education. Yeah, well, you also have Governor uh, Hoku who doesn't think black people know what a computer is. Black kids have no idea what a computer yeah. is, you know. And then you find out recent today, just this morning, while we're talking about Hochul, uh, you not only do the black kids not know what computers are, but one of your aides, one of your aides uh, yeah. there was was working for the Chinese this whole time, huh? Yeah. And that's the Wall Street Journal. And I mean, the Wall Street Journal leans conservative, you could say, but I mean, they're as, they're as a part of the mainstream media as anybody else and. And for the, you know, for the the the, the court findings to, to come out and, and show that the Chinese government or Chinese assets or operatives have infiltrated our government it doesn't surprise us, but it would make you an American conspiracy theorist, as you pointed out. in the beginning. Right. Yeah. Is it conspiracy or coincidence that all these Chinese spies just happen to be linked to the Democrat Party? Right. What, what a coincidence that is. Uh, but it, now getting into your race there, for, for closing yeah. it out here. Um, yeah. Are you guys is, are you scheduled to have a debate? Is there any kind of debate going to take place between you and Klobuchar? 
Well, we've accepted. I mean, we there was a we have a local uh, TV station, radio station here, WCCO, and I did a debate in the primary with my primary opponent on that station. Uh, the same the same guy and station has reached out and offered to to set up a debate with myself and Klobuchar. We accept the debate. Look, I debate her fifty days in a row if I if I could, and I think that should become more the common the common theme is we should have these debates that are somewhat mandatory for these candidates to participate in. So people can really see who they are and what they think under fire and pressure. So uh, I'm hoping we get the debate. If I was Amy Klobuchar, I wouldn't debate me uh, because she has no, there, you know, there's not a neocon in the world that could beat me in a debate, right? Cause we just don't want to send our money to some country to fight a war that has no path to victory and has no, no real interest for our country and our people. So uh, I wouldn't debate her if I was I wouldn't debate me if I was her, but uh, maybe she'll make the mistake anyway. I do think they're so important, Royce. And even even if they're done on like uh, not on the mainstream media, if they're done on podcasts or radios or something, so you can get a more authentic feel for it. And this way also too, the American people can see that there's a way to discuss these political issues without getting like you talk to a liberal, somebody on the street, they go from zero to 60 in five seconds. It's like it gets out of control. There's yelling and right. screaming. So it's helpful for the American people to say, hey, look, these two people can disagree on every single thing politically, but they can stand there and argue out the issues and do it somewhat the, the way we used to seem to have a civil discourse in this country. I think it's important to see the debates. Yeah, I agree. One hundred percent. One thousand percent. Well, the people are coming. Where do the people go uh, to support you and your campaign? Go to RoyceWhite.us. Uh, you can sign up to, you know, get a sign, make a donation, volunteer, uh, guard the ballots. I'm, I'm the first candidate or one of the first candidates in Minnesota to enact the guard the ballot law, the statutory law that allows people to volunteer. We're setting up a volunteer organization that allows me to, to uh, designate people from my campaign to stand visual guard over the ballots uh, for the duration of the, the rest of the election. So a step in the right direction for uh, election integrity. We'll see how many people want to help volunteer and, and stand and watch those ballots, make sure that they're uh, so we can have some a better chain of custody. It's not the be all end all, but it helps. So you can do all of that at RoyceWhite.us. Yeah, awesome. I got the link down in the description below so people can share it, click it, get involved in it. Your, your, your race is not just important in Minnesota. It is to the country here. So uh, God be with you. Uh, hopefully the next time I speak to you, it's Senator White. Thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here today on the Alec Lay Show. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you having me. Godspeed. All right, honored to have Royce White on the podcast. What do you guys think about the interview? Hit me with a comment down below. Don't forget, go to RoyceWhite.us to help him out with his campaign. It's now or never. Uh, we have got to be plunging ahead, moving forward here. We got to get guys like Royce White into the Senate because Trump, obviously, he could be handcuffed for real when if they throw him in prison on September 18th. But uh, you also have to have um, guys in the Senate. We need to take control of the Senate. And man, wouldn't it be crazy? Wouldn't it be how awesome would the future of this country look if we had Trump in the White House, control of the Congress and control of the Senate, right? Control the House and control the Senate. Wouldn't that be something? Imagine the work that Trump could do to better the lives of everyday Americans like you and me, of working class people like you and me, of family people like you and me. Imagine what Trump could do. Trump went in there his first term. He had people in there to undermine him. People that got in there specifically to undermine him were, were immediately put into his staff, right? They weaseled their way in with their bullshit, and they got involved in Trump's administration. They were only there to undermine him. Then he got smacked with this Russia, Russia, Russia that tied him up for three years, and it was all nonsense. The whole thing was made up, and it was a scam against Donald Trump. Now we're hearing more about Russia interfering with the elections. Merrick Garland says Russia's trying to interfere with the elections again. We're going to get Cash Patel's take on that in just a second here. Uh, but also, too, you had the, the, the phone call. Oh, we had to impeach him. Uh, he got hit with the, the COVID-19. We He had nothing but roadblock after roadblock. And look at everything he still managed to accomplish for the American people. It's, it's insane what this guy was able to do. And it's unimaginable how great he could truly make this country if these deep state pieces of crap would get out of the way and let this man govern. Give him, imagine you give him, give him the House and the Senate, what would happen? Man, we would be on easy street in four years. And then the country would be on a to completely different trajectory. Kamala Harris gets back in there and stays with these policies. We are doomed. We are absolutely doomed. So one of the important parts is going to be getting good people surrounding Trump. And it's also going to be allowing Trump to have some freedom to move and to govern without all this nonsense and accusations and impeachments and BS that he had to face. 
Getting in his administration, somebody that I would love to see, Cash Patel. I think Cash Patel would be a great Secretary of State, uh, somewhere in the defense. He is the former Chief of Staff uh, for the Department of Defense, uh, former Deputy Deputy Assistant to the President. Cash Patel is one of the best. I mean, I, I, he's another one of these guys, every time I reach out, he's always so kind and gracious with his time. He's got a new book uh, with the uh, Brave Books series. The Brave Books, if you're not familiar with them, guys, and you have kids, if, you, if you're a parent and you're not familiar with Brave Books, Google Brave Books or go to bravebooks.us because they have got a catalog of uh, kids' books that are phenomenal. They hit on the values that you love. Uh, they talk about family, faith, country. It's everything you would want for your kids, especially your little kids, to start learning at an early age. And it has nothing but great authors, Cash Patel being one of them. I've had a ton of other people from the Brave Book series. Uh, Robbie Starbuck is another one, Dinesh D'Souza, uh, Jack Basobic, the, 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 uh, Kirk Cameron. Uh, you know, he's another one. So go over to bravebooks.us. Cash got a new one, The Plot Against the King 3. He's got a three-part series over there. Uh, so go check out the Brave Book series. Also, Cash Patel, author of Government Gangsters, one of the best books. If you haven't read Government Gangsters, you're missing out. Uh, there's a reason why this thing was an instant bestseller. So go check out Government Gangsters. And I am really uh, just honored to know Cash Patel. So I'm going to bring him on and get his take on all this. So let's close it out with Cash Patel. You're listening to the Alec Lee Show. The future is family. All right, let's do it. Joining me now, Cash Patel. Welcome back to the Alec Lee Show. Hey, thanks so much for having me back, Alec. Always an honor. And uh, I thought of you right away, too, as I heard uh, just recently. Now we're back to Russia, Russia, Russia again. We just heard from Merrick Garland. We're going to have this Russian interference setting the stage for another possible uh, Russian putting Trump back into the White House. We'll break this whole thing down for me here. What's happening? Well, look, they failed across the board on putting forward a candidate of substance. Then they did it again and failed again. So what do they do? They go back to the only playbook they know, lying, cheating and stealing. They are the authors of the original Russiagate scam, where they illegally used American taxpayer dollars to unlawfully present information to a federal court and lie to a judge to illegally surveil a presidential candidate. And those folks at DOJ that started Russiagate back then, Lisa Monaco, John Carlin, are now back in positions of power, along with their rube at the FBI, Christopher Wray, who violated FISA 274,000 times in one year alone, they are back and with a vengeance because they have no plan to beat Donald Trump. So what are they going to do? They're going to run it. And MSNBC and the bozos in the morning are talking about it all over again. Russia's coming for you. The ironic thing is, Pres uh, I think, is it President Putin? Prime Minister President Putin um, came out and said he wants Kamala Harris to win. It's kind of a poetic justice of the sorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no doubt that Putin wants Kamala Harris to win. I, I was just—I just had Gordon Chang on last week talking about China. There's no doubt that Xi Jinping uh, wants to see Kamala Harris win. They don't want to see Donald Trump getting in there and upsetting the apple cart on the sweet deals that they have. Uh, it just seems like it would be work against them if they had somebody like Trump, who's unpredictable, uh, who they don't know what to expect from this guy. Uh, it seems like they'd much rather have the status quo. Do you think it's the same for for China as it is for Russia? Yeah, I think China's flying below the radar. They're strategically, Xi Jinping's playing this one a little smarter than um, any other ad public facing adversaries, right? He's kind of going behind the scenes and seeing how he can plot against Taiwan and ultimately acquire Taiwan, which is his goal. And he wants to figure out a way that the CCP can go again and dominate the uh, global scene again, because they're, thanks to Donald Trump, have been on the decline. But unfortunately, uh, no thanks to Harris and Biden. They've seen a steady rise in their cyber capabilities in CCP's expansion across the world stage again in working with our adversaries in or, or Iran and helping them procure weapons of mass destruction and elements to build them and also trading with them, including oil and other materials that they were embargoed from ever doing. Because what did Biden and Harris say? No, oh, Ron, we don't care about you. You can be the number one sponsor of terror. We're still going to give you $7 billion and allow you to start World War III in Israel. And the CCP is smartly taking advantage of all of it.
And it seems like every time you trip over a chair at the DNC, you fall onto a Chinese spy, right? They just seem to be littered all over the, the Democrat Party. But also, too, you mentioned there Christopher Ray, the corrupt the guy that he is. The FBI, another black guy for the FBI. We just had this school shooting in Georgia that took place. This is a kid on the FBI radar for over a year. They have they they know this kid is a threat. They know he's a danger. They do nothing. He slips through the cracks. Now you have kids dead, teachers dead, and uh, another one of these shootings that could have been prevented easily if the FBI is on top of their game. Look, when you have an American citizen alone, myself, who has taken on Christopher Ray more times than Congress, led by Republican majority, that tells you the state of affairs. I've sued Christopher Ray in the FBI and federal court, and we are not stopping because this type of conduct from the world's top cop is baby gap law enforcement at its finest. This guy, Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI, just yesterday put out a notice to those causing destruction against America. He said, quote, knock it off. Knock it off. That's how you're going to defend American law enforcement and protect the American people? This guy is a joke. And whoever is running his communications department is even a worse leader and communicator than Christopher Ray ever is. What a stooge of the deep state and an apparatchik of these government gangsters. And remember, Christopher Ray was the one who actually permitted the government gangster Russiagate collusion hoax to continue. And so what stings the most, and stings not even the right word, what is the most and largest tragedy of this entire situation? Four people are dead, students and teachers, beloved football coaches. And this guy, the shooter, was on the FBI radar for a year. Maybe, just maybe, if the FBI focused on rolling up terrorists at the border and protecting communities from known shooters, instead of focusing on DEI, white rage, and knock it off, we might actually have some protective results in our communities. Yeah, well said, Cash. Yeah, no problem going in and raiding the house of a woman who, old lady that walked through the Capitol building on January 6th. But when it comes right. to this, asleep at the wheel. And again, you talk about embarrassment and a stooge. Uh, this Trump assassination attempt that the media now has seemed to have had amnesia that it, that it ever occurred. Now, Homeland Security was the people that were there, not at, not Secret Service people. They're saying there were these there's a Homeland Security agents that only had a two hour webinar. These people weren't even trained like this. Every single layer of the onion that gets peeled off of this thing stinks worse than the last one. Josh Hawley had these whistleblowers come forward saying these, these weren't even the real guys. These weren't even secret service agents. So this whole thing, it just seems the more you read into it, the more it seems like Trump was completely set up. And this was a failure at every level here. What's your take on the latest with this? Well, this highlights everything that's wrong with Washington, D.C. When you have a Republican majority in Congress and it takes them over a month to stand up a committee to investigate the assassination attempt of a president of the United States, and then they say, we'll get back to you, but we're in recess for another month after this month. So they're not even coming back into session until next week. So 60 some days after the assassination attempt, they might have their first meeting or they went to the crime scene last week. Who cares? America expects you to deliver. Why are brave whistleblowers coming forward when you, Congress, have oversight of these departments and agencies to get us the damn documents? Where are the subpoenas? If you want to know what's actually going on with this investigation, my suggestion is you follow the warriors um, in Congress like Corey Mills and Eli Crane who are doing their own investigation and actually putting out information and Senator Josh Hawley who's getting whistleblowers in because they will accomplish more than these other guys ever will. And I've offered my services voluntarily to anyone in Congress who needs it to run an investigation and might know a thing or two about that. And I'm proud to be working with Corey and Eli and these other folks. But it's like now it's September 5th and the world is like, what? President Trump got shot? When did that happen? Because the mainstream media drove right over it. Yep. Yeah, you didn't see... Yeah, you're right. And you didn't see any kind of like uh, specials on ABC or CNN or anything dedicated to this whole thing. They just completely whitewashed it. It's gone. You don't even hear about it. And and the fact that they didn't put Corey Mills and Eli Crane on this committee to investigate it, it's almost as if like they don't want to uncover the truth. Why would you? You got these guys, uh, former Navy SEAL sniper. You got a combat veteran, uh, Corey Mills. Why would you not utilize these guys and put them on the committee to investigate this? It almost seems like you don't want to get to the bottom of it. This is Congress at its finest feigning an interest in accountability. They'll never actually pull the levers because no one over there has the gumption, or most of them don't. Some of them, like Corey and Eli, do, and, and a few others. But no one actually wants to issue the subpoenas and enforce them. Where's the subpoenas against uh, the Secret Service? 
uh, the Department of Homeland Security? Where are all the emails and communications where the Secret Service director lied to the world about President Trump's team requesting more protective service detail around the president? And now we know it's a lie. And two of them have come in and lied to Congress, which is a federal crime, by the way. No big deal. But apparently, if you ignore a subpoena and you're a Republican, then you get sent to jail unlawfully like Steve Bannon. But when there's an actual violation of a congressional subpoena and violating the uh, oath of office by lying under oath, Republicans are just like, whatever, we'll go on summer break. It's a joke. And I'm offended that we are in the majority right now and behaving in this way because the American people deserve better. So, you know, we have your show and we're going to keep pounding the pavement to get answers. It's ridiculous. And now we're only 13 days away here, Cash, from September 18th and the sentencing of Donald Trump. Now, I know that the, they just put the letter out to uh, Juan Mershon that he has to appear before the Judiciary Committee on the 13th. Now he's supposed to be showing up. Uh, so that's prior to this sentencing. I, I, I don't know why they waited until the week of the actual sentencing to bring this guy into the court. We know about the corruption uh, with his daughter raising money for the campaign for Joe Biden, the whole bit. But why wait till the week? of the freaking sentencing to bring this guy in. What do you think is going to happen, too, if you put your your your, uh, your futuristic goggles on there? Do they put Donald Trump in prison? I mean, they've been trying so hard to do this. They're right at the doorstep. How do you see this playing out? Well, one, that judge is never going to appear before Congress because he's going to ha have the Republicans bend the knee yet again um, to the overpowering deep state machine and allow the disinformation and two-tier system of justice to continue. Another shocking embarrassment um, that will occur with a Republican majority. And two, what I think will happen is, well, one, President Trump should never have been convicted of these bogus crimes, but the uh, war machine of the two-tier system of justice had its day in New York. And so now, if President Trump is sentenced to even a single day in jail, I think the American Constitutional Republic won't stand for it and will show for him in droves um, at the election, even more so than they would have if he hadn't been. I don't know what this judge is going to do. He might issue some form of suspended sentence where he says you have to report to jail for X amount of time, but we'll wait till after the election. I don't know that there's a good answer on this one for this judge at all, because his side probably doesn't even want him to sentence Donald Trump to jail because you are literally imprisoning your political opponent. I didn't know we were back in Venezuela or other such third world countries in Africa that do that. But apparently in 2024 America, New York and DOJ are fine doing it. While they're telling you that Donald Trump is a dictator, Donald Trump's going to be a dictator. It's in there. Meanwhile, we're going to put him in jail so he can't be a dictator in the name of democracy. So this yeah. whole thing. But it just seems like cash. I mean, they've tried so hard to get to this point and they're right there. It's a, it's hard to believe they're going to give up that opportunity to actually get that that picture of him in jail is what they want. And I think it would do even more damage to them than the mugshot did. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Last topic I want to hit on before I uh, talk about your book there. Uh, Zuckerberg. He apologized for or somewhat apologized for getting involved in, you know, uh, hiding the laptop store. He really didn't mention any of this by name, but, you know, he admits that he was involved in covering up and and, and stopping information from flowing on Facebook freely. Uh, you know, we call it election interference. Uh, do you see him now staying away from this or is Facebook meta this whole thing? Are we still going to see them censoring stuff from the one side like they did in 2020? Zuckerberg is a fraud pretending to care about American democracy and the election. This guy spent 400 million last election cycle, and I don't care what he says, he is going to spend money somehow, some way in this election cycle. And let's put that aside. He owns one of the largest social media companies on earth in Facebook, Meta, and Instagram. I didn't hear the CEO and owner, Mark Zuckerberg, come out and say, I guarantee you my companies will not participate in censorship at the behest of the FBI or anyone else in the federal government, like we did in the last two elections, like we did with Hunter Biden's laptop, like we did with the 51 Intel letter. He could have said that, but he didn't because he wants it to happen. And as a sort of proactive, preemptive move to say, oh, I told you so, he came out to the media and said, oh, you know, uh, I, I'm, my bad, I'm sorry. But it doesn't matter to these guys because they're going to go past November 5th. And if they get their way and Harris is awarded the victory, they're just going to be like nothing to see here. And if Donald Trump wins, they'll come back and say, see, our companies tried to comply. But it's it's BS. And Zuckerberg is the biggest fraud um, in big business. Yeah, really well said, Cash. You smashed that one. I know now. Uh, you got the, the trilogy is complete here. You got the <laughs> plot against the King three. 
There it is. Brave Books, man. I love Brave Books. Uh, it's one of the best series for any parent out there to get it's their great. kids hooked on. And you got the three peat. So what do you got here? How do you how do you finish it out? Well, you can't have a trilogy talking about King Donald without a book called The Return of the King. And that's what we got here. We have King Donald who goes on and takes on the dragon of Jalapenos, the DOJ, um, in the immediate times, chasing around Kamala and Sleepy Joe Biden and so many other fun characters. Yes, court jester Adam Schiff is back in the pages of this glorious book. And look, it's fun way for kids and adults together to put together everything you and I have been talking about on a simple level to say to our children, hey, people have been lied to by authoritative figures and we've caught them. And when you catch them, there's consequences for those actions, but sometimes the people get away with it. And in order to fix the realm, we have to elect the right leader. And the right leader is Donald Trump. I'm sure the New York Times and CNN are gonna excoriate me for pushing conspiracy theories with the children's fiction book. Wall Street Journal did that too, by the way, which is hilarious. I didn't know they used children's fiction to substantiate uh, reporting. But go to theplotagainstthekeng.com and buy your trilogy. We're doing signed copies and we're doing gold edition copies, and we're doing fight, fight, fight copies. So plotagainstthekeng.com. I appreciate you letting me talk about Plot Against the King. Awesome, definitely. I got the link down there in the description below. I know they were, they, they were going after Anna Paulina Luna when I had her on talking about her Brave Book series there too. So they, But I'm telling you, I love Trent Talbot, what he does over there with the yeah, Brave Book series. It's, it's the best. I always recommend it to parents. Uh, great to have in the toolbox for your kids. Also, again, I got the link down there, Government Gangsters. Uh, there's a reason why this book sold like hotcakes. So uh, Cash Patel, always an honor. I, you're always gracious with your time. Every time I ask you to come on, you do so. I really do appreciate that. So thanks for coming back on the Alec Lay Show. Hey. Thanks for having the uh, courage to put out the truth. We appreciate it. God bless you. All right. Always an honor to have Cash Patel on the podcast. What do you guys think about the interview? Hit me with a comment down below. If you're liking this show, if you're enjoying the format, if you like what you're hearing, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel wherever you are listening. Please subscribe, like. I know that I rebroadcast these on Apple and Spotify and on YouTube. If you listen on YouTube, I don't edit or change any of the content because I stream it live on Rumble and I don't change any of it. And sometimes there's words I may say or things that may may, may not go over well uh, with the algorithm over there. My channel's been suspended twice or three times. I'm one, one suspension away from losing the channel. So if you're listening on some other device or some other channel... Follow me on Rumble. This way you'll always make sure you get the latest live streams from the Alec Lay Show. If you're enjoying it, if you like what you hear. I mean, today, I mean, how, how much better does it get, right? Roger Stone, Royce White, Cash Patel. This was a banger, all right? I'm very blessed to get guests like this. It's all because of you guys, the listeners out there, the watchers of this program, and I can't say thank you enough for your support. Again, Cash Patel has got that new book with the Brave Book series. Uh, go check it out at bravebooks.us. Uh, he's got The Plot Against the King 3. He's also the author of uh, Government Gangsters, so go and check that out as well. And again, I wanted to give you a couple of hits. Uh, Donald Trump, just to close this out, Donald Trump was doing the town hall with Sean Hannity last night on Fox News. Uh, let me give you a couple of hits. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Okay. 2016 was about the forgotten man and forgotten woman. What is 2024 about? So it's not that different. It's still about the forgotten man and the forgotten woman. The people are being treated horribly in this country. We're a country that's being laughed at all over the world. And I'll be honest, if Joe Biden would be a great president, I would be happier than being the worst president in the history of our country, because I want to see what's good for the country. And I would have been very happy. I have very nice places I could be. This is not easy. I got shot at, you know, I mean, I got hit. I got hit. One I could have been all over that place. I could have, but you know what? Uh, it's very simple. And it starts with make America great again. That's what we have. My view is early voting is about to start. And I don't know how many Americans are truly familiar with her positions of decriminalizing illegal immigration and free housing, health care, education. Tim Walls wants free college education, legal driver's licenses. I was so honored and, today. And she wants his, a path to his brother endorsed me. I saw that. All 
Uh, you got more from Donald Trump on Fox News with Sean Hannity than you got with so far since she announced her presidency or since she was given or gifted the nominee for the uh, Democrat Party from Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. They've done uh, between Donald Trump, J.D. Vance. You got 36 different interviews like you saw him here with Sean Hannity, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. You got one that was edited and stepped on and everything else. So. Uh, Donald Trump, he's hitting it hard. He's everywhere. He's with uh, Lex Friedman. He's doing with the Aiden Ross. He's over with uh, that guy Theo Vaughn. He, he's with Elon Musk. Donald Trump is doing what it takes to win. That's what Donald Trump is doing right now. He's doing what it takes to get his message, his policies, his message of policies, his vision for the future, a message of hope for you middle class workers out there, for the working class guy. He's out there trying to tell you what he is going to do, and he's got a proven track record. Not like Kamala Harris. She's trying to tell you what she's going to do when her proven track record shows you different. All right. Trump is running on what he was able to do, despite the fact that he's been hamstrung, like I was telling you before, with everything in his way. So there you go. There's some latest from Trump. Again, what did you think about the podcast today? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Special thank you to Roger Stone, Royce White, and Cash Patel for giving me a few minutes of their time here. Drop some com uh, comments down below. Somebody else you'd like to see on the podcast. Maybe somebody new. Maybe bring back somebody else. I'm doing my best right now to line up guests for next week. Follow me on X at Alec Lace because now Congress next week is back in session. I'm going to be hitting it hard to try to get as many congressmen and senators to join me or to come back to the Alec Lace show. So get your suggestion down there in the comment box, all right? And that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, God bless all of you listeners out there and you parents. God bless our police, first responders. Uh, God bless our military, our veteran. God bless Americans, uh, uh, veterans. God bless America. And I will catch you guys right back on Rumble Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Live. God bless you. Have a great weekend. You're listening to The Alec Lee Show. The future is family. Promo code FATHERHOOD, go to MyPillow.com, and uh, everything we have on sale there. Actually, we brought in the percale sheets. The queen size, $34.98 a set. King size, $39.98 a set. That's unheard of. It's the lowest price in history. And everything else on there that we, we have, you can save up to 80%. We don't have any middlemen. We don't have box stores and stuff. They canceled on my pillow. They even, they even canceled my book to get my book out, you know. So use that promo code FATHERHOOD, everybody. And, and please help us out. And thanks for ones you, that you have already helped. And by the way, you'll be helping yourself to the best sleep in history, period. I got to tell you, the mattress topper is the best product I have in the house, yeah, Mike, no turn, doubt. And that turns any bed into the best bed in history. If you've got an old bed, new bed, doesn't matter. You put the mattress topper on there and it changes everything. You need a different input to get a different output. People waking up every day going, maybe my bed will be better than night. No, you need a MyPillow mattress.